Four to Focus, a college football podcast. We have a lifetime Florida State Seminole fan, that's me, Brandon, and a lifetime Florida Gator fan, that's my co-host, Chris, and we're putting aside our differences to bring you the fantastic world of college football throughout the Sunshine State. Today, Chris and I will give you a preview of the five Florida teams in bowl games this year and our predictions of those games, and we'll also give you a little sneak peek of what we're planning on the rest of the year and into January. So given today's topic, Chris, how are you feeling about today's show, my friend? Um, I'm, I'm good, man. I, I always say this. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And a little backstory um, on that. Ooh. A while ago, it used to be, I think it was Cap- Capital One Bowl season or something. Yeah. And, and the I don't think they still do this, but ESPN used to play um, commercials all the time promoting the bowl season. And they would play that song. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But they would, you know, there'd be, they they switch up the lyrics obviously to fit college football. There'd be, I forgot what they were like, um, footballs for tossing and touchdowns for scoring or something like that. They would. <laughs> um, so, whenever I think of that song, now I think of college football. They're they're synonymous now. So I think it's the most wonderful time of the year in in sports. Um, buddy of mine though was. Uh, talking to me about this he thinks march madness is hmm. uh, and i was like hmm do, what do i like well, i really like march madness i really get into it and, I'll, and a lot of people do but not a lot of people as many people get into bowls but for me personally i think i like bowl season over march madness what about you that's a great question actually there are more bowl teams than there are ncaa tournament teams now oh, i think God. about it <laughs> So. Wow. Really? Why are there so – I mean, I like bowls. I just sat here praising them for a minute or two. <laughs> but 40 is a bit much. Um, <laughs> a bit much. But, yeah, what, so do you, what are your thoughts on March Madness verse? Um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're both fun. Uh, you certainly have that three- or four-week span where they're pretty much consuming you. And I don't know. I Obviously, we have the show. College football has always been my passion, and so I think it has to yeah. win out. But um, it's pretty close because, you know, you can fill an NCAA tournament day from basically noon until uh, 2 a.m. Eastern right. Standard Time versus a bowl is kind of, you know, we got five last Saturday. You're going to have one per weekday until Christmas Day, and then you get one or two here, and then they really pick up on the last week. Yeah. So they're a little more sporadic and spaced out, but uh, just by the narrowest of margins, I like bowl season a little better. Yeah, I agree. Narrowest of margins is a good way to put it because – um, March Madness is really fun. It really is, and uh, it is. It's nice to, you know, noon on a Thursday start watching college sports in general, and then you know it's going to go till midnight, maybe even later. And then the upsets in Cinderella, and then, um, but I re- picking picking the March Madness is real fun too. But I just like college football so much, yeah. and. <laughs> Just having random college football, meaning, I guess, somewhat meaningful college football on a Tuesday night, um, <laughs> Friday midday, is real fun. Yeah. yeah. And matchups that you probably wouldn't normally see throughout the year. Um, yeah. It's it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, it is. And I love that it's this is it. You know, everything's on the line. Nothing else left on the table. Nothing else left to play for. Um. I'm always kind of partial to the teams that are between head coaches. Mm, and yeah. they, oh, the assistant coach, well, he's coaching in this one game. He's interim. Well, I'm like, okay, well, there's no reason to run four trick plays. Yeah. <laughs> there's no reason to ever punt if you're that, hey, this is the only game you have. Have some fun with it. Right, right. So um, hard to believe both of our schools were in that position last year. Yeah, very much so. Yep. So, all right, man. Well, we had some games came up, and um, we wanted to cover them. We're going to go a little bit reverse order this time than we might no- normally do. So for the fans expecting like the the premier games, those are going to be last. So why don't we start off with the first game that's coming up chronologically, Chris. That would be South Florida versus Marshall. And uh, yes. remind me what bowl game this is again. Gasparilla. <laughs> Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. <laughs> Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. Oh, it, it sounds like he, something you need to see a doctor about, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, here we are, Gasparilla. Yeah, uh, interesting matchup. I mean, 
you have Marshall, um, pretty good season. Um, they also have a pretty good defense. You know, they have wins over some really good teams. They beat FIU and FAU this year. Mm-hmm. Plus, they had some other decent wins: Charlotte, Old Dominion, Western Kentucky, East Carolina, and they do finish eight and four. But I, I look at this game and I say, okay, maybe you you catch South Florida coming back. You know, we've talked enough about their woes. We know they lost five in a row to end the season. Mm-hmm. But I've seen a lot of teams like to succeed in their bowl games, and so I see no reason for USF not to come out swinging, change up some game plan get some time to rest, lick their wounds, and really come out pretty strong. I don't think that Vegas agrees, though. They have Marshall favored by two and a half, which eh, most of the bowl games are going to be somewhere around there. They're designed to be evenly matched games. So uh, Marshall has their quarterback, Green. He's had a really good season, but their star player to me was their receiver, Brady. 66 catches. 914 yards and nine touchdowns this year. Mm. So you're going to have to stop this guy. And South Florida's defense has been suspect to a lot of stuff, including the pass. So I, uh, I, do you want me to give me my pick now? Or do you have some thoughts on the game? Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of, I'm on the opposite a little bit. I, I don't see much life of USF. I agree that you're going to have a few more weeks to regroup. But, man, I just I haven't seen much of them. And their quarterback as a position has been a revolving door. Um, if they figure that out in this, in this few weeks, maybe. And maybe playing for their, their coach. But I don't know. And Marshall's kind of um, been a little bit better than expected. So I'm kind of leaning towards Marshall on this. Um, actually, yeah, that's who I'm taking. I'm going to take the Marshall yeah. Thundering Herd. Uh, actually, not even close. I'm taking Marshall by uh, 17. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. So was... 38 to 21. I know. I kind of, I kind of fooled you there with the way I was <laughs> building them. <up. laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just too much there. I mean, the head coach at Marshall, his name is Doc Holiday. He's just not, oh, not going to lose. That's. I, did he? I want to say he coached at Florida. That sounds real familiar. Maybe it's just from the movies, but <laughs> um, maybe I'm just making that up. It's very possible. <laughs> Look that up a little bit here, but uh, yeah, you got to go. You got to go hard on this, and more so, not so much that I, I'm a big Marshall fan. I'm just definitely not a fan of USF right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we've talked enough about Charlie Strong and being a candidate somewhere else, and I. I I, I'd hate to admit they were probably wrong. The the doors have closed, but there are sometimes hirings after bowl season or firings, unfortunately. So there is a chance that there's some movement there. I I just maybe it's not the right year for him to move. Maybe USF is the best he can do from now on in his career. That's also a possibility too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if he's. This might be the last game for him there. He's always going to be that a name that you really like, but then once you get it, you're like, I don't know about this. It's like that that meal that you're like, oh man, that sounds really good, <laughs> and it gets to your table, you're like, okay, this is what was I thinking? This is not the meal I want. I think that's that's going to be Charlie Strong, honestly. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. um, I I'm always a fan of him. I'm partial to it, but the results just haven't really been there. And yeah, I'm taking Marshall pretty big in this one. They had a better better showing, and they beat better teams. Um, FYI, to backtrack a little bit, yes, uh, Doc Holliday, he was with the Florida staff from 05 to 07. So okay, I knew that name. It sounded yeah. familiar. Okay. Won a national championship. He's actually been the head coach of Marshall since 2010. So. Okay. Didn't he have a son, Cade Holliday? I think he might have played as a walk-on or something like that, too. Okay. Wow, good memory. He it looks like he spent a lot of his coaching time in West Virginia. Okay. Um, so, you know, he's native of that area. Makes a lot of sense. Right, right, right. So, okay, we're both in agreement there. I, I had a thirty-eight twenty-one, which means take the over. I think it was set at fifty-two and a half, just because I don't think the defenses will be able to stop um, a lot of the offenses, despite how putrid USF has been lately. Uh, they still, eh, they probably get in the twenties at least. Twenties, okay. I, I'd like to see uh, Cronkite um, have a good game in this. I'd like to see what he does. Because he made a name for himself a little bit throughout this year. Sure. I'd like to see him um, finish strong on that. 
All right. Very good. So that'll wrap up the Bulls, uh, the Bulls season. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, on to the FIU Panthers. Yeah. They're playing in the Makers <laughs> Wanted Bahamas Bowl. Nailed it. I, I will start laughing. I couldn't say. Um, only because of your reaction on the last episode about the names. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It's a good one. We will, There are Makers Wanted. What do we make it? I don't know. No, no, we, no, just, we, just... we just want Makers. <laughs> Absolutely. I wanna, I'm a finder. Nope, nope. We want makers. Okay. <laughs> awesome stuff. Well, what were your thoughts when you saw? Oh, we went over the reactions, but when you see the game getting closer, what are your thoughts on how this game will play out? Um, it's gonna be a close one. It's gonna be a tight one. Toledo actually and and FIU have a common opponent this year. Yeah, you know who that is? Oh, Miami. Yes, yeah. Miami played them back to back. Um, and FIU fared a little bit better, but they both got blown out by Miami. Um, I do like um, Toledo's running back, Kobach. And that's, that's a real real name, K O B A C K. He said 13 touchdowns this year, um, 800 yards, 875 rushing. Um, he's been pretty decent for them, solid for them, but 13. Rushing touchdowns is a really good number, um, but I'm I'm really high on on the Panthers right now, and um, so I'm I think I'm gonna I might go with them. Just to, they're playing pretty well. Um, I think it's gonna be evenly matched. It's gonna be one thing I though that I think gives the, the Panthers a an edge is that it's in the Bahamas, um, nowhere near Ohio. <laughs> and <laughs> a little bit closer, my a little bit closer, like an hour two hours, whatever, flight from um, FIU to the Bahamas. So I think that's going to help, and it's going to be noon. I'm right in, right in the middle of the heat. I think that gives the Panthers the edge. Yeah, I'm actually in agreement with you here, and this was one of my few bowl upsets. Uh, Toledo by far had a harder schedule, but they lost all of their good games. They, they're they victorious against Nevada, Bowling Green, Ball State, Kent State, and then Central Michigan, who was one of the worst teams in the nation. So they finished seven and five, but so they had a tougher road to get to this bowl. But they lost to Virginia Tech, Fresno, Buffalo, Northern Illinois, who won the conference, and then of course Miami. So they're challenging themselves, but that doesn't always equal tougher bowl presence. Yeah, yeah. And they weren't even really competitive in a lot of those games. Toledo's pass defense is really bad. Um, none of their categories on defense is better than 80th in the country. And I was actually looking over the numbers, very surprised that Toledo was favored by so much. They're favored by six. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm taking FIU to win, too. 20 to 10. I'm going to take the under on this one. Okay. 20 to 10. I think Toledo gets more than 10. Okay. But I do, I, like you said, their they're pass defense is not the best. And Morgan, um, getting close to 3,000 yards in the season, 26 touchdowns. I think that's really going to help the Panthers. Um, I, one thing, though, that I – I'm curious. We talked about this before. Is what the running back situation is going to be at FIU? Sure. Um, given the re- the reports coming out that one of their running backs, not the starting running back, one of the running backs had an arrest warrant out for him for a yeah. for a couple months, yep. and just now got arrested and won't be in the bowl game. Yep. Sean Darius Green. I I don't yeah. see that this has a lot of effect on the actual field. Because he, he had, like, second or third string running back numbers, like three or four touchdowns, 400 yards, something like that. So how will that all play out as far as morale goes? Um, and uh, you and I, like we talked a little bit before the show, not not really familiar with the law too much, but it's kind of surprising, as you mentioned, that they wouldn't be able to find him if there was a way yeah. for his arrest. It's not you like, know where he is every Saturday. Yep, and that's not a totally – uh, blend in the crowd type of name, Sean Davis yeah. Green. So it should be right. easy to find, but the school hasn't really said anything yet. They haven't said yes or no. We knew about this, and technically, the NCAA has to take no action for any criminal cases. We've talked about how sometimes they choose to do so, but at Penn State's the biggest example. They decided to crack down on a criminal case, but they didn't have to take any action there. That's up to the courts. Right. Um, I heard somebody once say. If you found out that your starting quarterback was a serial killer, the NCAA couldn't do a thing. It all has to be handled by lawyers. You'd have to. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So I don't know. There's some kind of separation there. Maybe that accounts for some of it. I, I can't imagine that would account for four months of not 
Need to get some action though. I'm kind of really yeah, surprised. Yeah, right. Especially given the charge and how the society and the culture is uh, right. very against um, the mistreatment of you know anybody, especially uh, women, and just kind of odd. Odd that you're, yeah. they're not going to jump on that when they can. Right, and to clarify, if we didn't earlier, this this appears to be a domestic violence case. Right, right, uh, right. where there was some kind of assault back in August, and mm-hmm. I think the the details are kind of muddied with what actually happened or whether the charges were filed at first. But right, uh, either way, I I think this is a pretty safe pick for people to take FIU despite that. Right, and yeah. you know, like I said, nine wins for the the Panthers if they get this done. So. Good for them. That'd be impressive. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's move on to another matchup. That would be the Pinstripe Bowl. Or is the, well, I'm going to call it the Disappointment Bowl. (laughs) The Letdown Bowl. The Short of Expectations Bowl. You could fill in, you could see where I'm going. (laughs) Yeah, I can. I do. I'm reading between the lines there. (laughs) Man, it's, uh, like we've mentioned before, this is a rematch of last year's Orange Bowl. So both of these teams were 10 or better wins last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow, how things changed. So what were your summer thoughts on how this game is going to play out? I, going back to like you were saying, it's, they both started out highly ranked. Wisconsin as high as number four beginning of the season. And the big games, they didn't they didn't show up in the big games. And they, they come into this game seven and five and Miami again, like the big games, they didn't show up. You know, you could say there was their biggest win, uh Virginia at the end there. Mm, yeah. Or no, Pitt. It was a Pitt, sorry. Pitt at the end. Um, yeah, they went on the road and lost Virginia. Pitt at the end, like that's their biggest win. Their their second biggest win is that comeback against Florida State. Like yeah, it's very disappointing to see both these um how these how these teams uh, played out, um, and now it's odd that they're playing each other. And I thought that the Bulls would try to avoid rematches like this if they can, but here they are back to back. Um, and I do like Wisconsin's running game. Yeah, Taylor, eleven yards short of two thousand yards. Um, he's really good. Um, and I like Miami's running game at times. We know Miami's defense um, is uh, pretty good, but Diaz, our defensive coordinator, he's out the door. I, th- I think he, is he coaching in the game? Um, I didn't check. I'm not sure. I know he's now the head coach at Temple. Yeah, so he's leaving, but I think he's. Yeah. I think I read somewhere he actually, he's actually still coaching. Oh, okay. But I'm curious to see what uh, the, how's that's going to affect them because mm-hmm. now the leader of one of their strengths or their strongest um, side of the ball. He's not going to be there. Yeah. He's leaving. So Miami needs this. You could ask, like, who needs this more, Wisconsin or Miami? Yeah. And I would say Miami because Diaz is leaving, and they need some kind of something positive going into the offseason. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. But who are you taking to win? I'm going Wisconsin. Wisconsin. On Wisconsin, man. Mm-hmm. I just – I just think that I just like Taylor. I like the running back. Um, I like what he can do, and uh, I think Wisconsin played tougher competition too this year, even though they didn't do well against them. Right. So I'm going to go Wisconsin, and it's the Pinstripe Bowl. And where is that being played at? Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium. And where is Miami? Nowhere near Yankee Stadium. So. <laughs> I think that's going to play a big factor into Wisconsin, who's used to the cold. So, I like what about that. you? You got? Well, I'm going to for a lot of the same reasons. Uh, I'm going to take Wisconsin. I don't. I don't see this game being too frilly. This is not going to be a fun game to watch in a lot of aspects. You yeah. mentioned, oh, Taylor is just like one of the best. Actually, he is the best. He won the Duke Walker Award. Yeah, okay. He was the best running back in the nation this year. Despite a seven and five season, he still wins the Doak Walker. That's pretty that's impressive. Right. And that's that's how potent their rushing attack is. But their trade off is uh they're absolutely awful in passing. Mm. Um out of hundred and thirty teams, their passing offense is one sixteen. 
Mm. And Miami's defense, I couldn't believe this, Chris. First in the nation in passing defense was the Hurricanes. Really? Incredible. Yes, sir. I didn't think they were good, but not that good. Okay. Yeah, imagine if they had a good offense to go with it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, so it's kind of sad that they couldn't pair that together. But you also look at Wisconsin as 116 in passing. Miami is 109th in passing. I mean, just bottom of the rung. You're just not going to see any passes. So this is going to be a short game. Clock's going to be constantly running. Uh, if you can get Dallas going, basically, and just the rushing attack from Miami, then yeah. you only have to have your quarterback, whoever you decide that to be, he only has to throw like nine, ten passes. And you just have to force the turnovers. That's what they've been feeding off of, and that's been their game plan. Will it work in this weather, in this atmosphere? I, I just can't say that I, I have faith it will. Um, you were saying about who it means more to. Absolutely. Uh, if you if were to compare the head coaches, I'm like, well, you think Rick's a better coach, but maybe he's already moved his mentality on to recruiting, which he's really good at. That's his strength. Wow. And I just, you know, with DS and all the other things going on, I'm going to take Wisconsin. Uh, give me a, uh, 27 to 16. I think it's going to be 20. I'll go 2016. 2016. Okay. Yeah. Believe it or not, Miami's favorite in this game at three and a half. Right? Oh, it's a little surprising. I mean, these are not great teams going at it, so I, I guess, you know, why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So that'll wrap up the Penn State Bowl. Let's go ahead and move on to the uh, New Year's Six Bowls. Yes. So, your Gators are taking on the Michigan Wolverines. Peach Bowl mm-hmm. played in Atlanta. Uh, a lot of storylines going into this one for even two programs that haven't even met that often. Yeah. Um, so the Gators coming off of a surprising season, go nine and three in the SEC, have some big time wins. Michigan coming off of 10 wins in a row at one point. How do you see some of this uh, back and forth matchup going? Well, Michigan has definitely had Florida's number for a, a while now. We've met in three bowls in the last 10, 15 years, something like that. Um, we started off in Dallas last year playing Michigan, and they just whooped us in Dallas. Um, they whooped us in, um, I think it was a six bowl or something like that a few years ago, um, 41 to 7. Um, our only touchdown, a uh, receiver threw to the, run, to the quarterback. Uh, so it was a it was a rough game. Um, 07, Tebow's Heisman year, he loses to Michigan in, in the bowl game. That actually was close, um, even towards the end there. So they've had our number. They just I don't know what it is. Um, we just can't get over that hump. And they're a good team. They seventh in the nation. Their two losses, Ohio State and Notre Dame, really good teams. But the one thing you look at, that Ohio State game was pretty bad. Like 60 points yeah. is is real bad to give up. And if you're an elite team and you're giving up 60 points, that's not good. There's no excuse for that. They have a, um, a really good defense, a really good defense, which kind of scares me. Um, and I, I like their, their running back, Higdon. And Patterson's pretty decent at, at quarterback there. Um. So everything is saying we should lose to Michigan. Everything's pointing to if the experts are saying that we should lose. I think we're a seven and a half um, point dog. Mm-hmm. Um, everything is pointing to Michigan. They're higher ranked. Um, they have less. They have more wins. They have had our number. But I got a sneaky suspicion that the Gators are ready to play. Um, I really like the way Mullen has got these guys playing. I don't know if Florida's the better team, per se, but I think Mullen knows what he's doing. And I trust him, especially with time, to figure something out. As long as he didn't overthink. I think he overthought in the Georgia game by putting the package with Emory. And obviously, there was the injury on defense that really helped hurt us. But um, I like the way Mullen's got this, this team going. And I know Michigan's starting um, defensive tackle, is it Gray? He's sitting out. 
mm-hmm. for this bowl game. I know there's a handful of other Michigan players that were on the fence that no, nothing confirmed. Um, so I think the Gators pulled this one out. Um, wow. And initially, initially I was like, no, we, we've lost this game. But the more I'm, I'm, I'm reading up and, and Gray not um, coming back and then – there was talks about maybe Harbaugh is going to go to the Packers, but that, that didn't go anywhere really. But a lot of noise in the system for Michigan and nothing from Florida. And Florida plays better when we're the underdogs. Absolutely. So I'm going to go Gators 30 to 24. Wow. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of surprised there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, not totally crazy. It, it certainly would be an upset, I think, if the Gators win. Yeah. Uh, some things probably going to impact the game. I think the offenses really are pretty much even. You probably have to give the explosive factor to the Gators, only given what they did against Florida State in the last month. Um, up to that point, they weren't a big play type of team. They were grinded out with Scarlett and P. Ryan, as we know. And you would rely on special teams for big plays, but not offense. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I mean, Shea Patterson is not all that special, in my opinion. Um, they run the ball a lot. You mentioned Higdon. Yeah. And the, the biggest thing Michigan relies on is their defense. They are just stingy. I mean, they only give up 116 rushing yards a game. And where Miami wasn't one or two in a lot of categories, Michigan was. So they they really do have the best defense in the country this season. But, as you mentioned, the Ohio State game, you wouldn't know it by that four quarters right. there. It just looked completely gone. So... The Wolverines did win 10 in a row. They have impressive wins over Penn State, Wisconsin, and Michigan State. Wisconsin ended up not holding up as much, we know. But their two biggest games of the year. The first yeah. one and the last one, they ended up losing. And Yeah, the, the Michigan State and Penn State, they held them both to seven points, which is mm-hmm. impressive. Yeah. Um, and uh, Michigan does struggle in big games. I mean, mm-hmm. Michigan lost the Orange Bowl to Florida State just a couple of years ago. And Harbaugh has not proven he can win the big stuff yet. Still is winless against uh, the Buckeyes, and uh, I certainly don't think you're you're too off board picking the Gators because of the reasons you've been mulling and the coaching, and you know it is closer uh, to Florida than it is Michigan for the game as far as location yeah. is. Right. Uh, however, I'm still taking Michigan to win this game, uh, twenty to nineteen. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and that means that <laughs> yeah. Florida's kicking a lot of field goals in my game. Yeah. Uh, but definitely if, taking if the gets, under. Yeah. Well, I said this earlier in, in the season. When Florida gets like over 20, we we have our, our chances of winning goes up through the roof. So that makes sense. There you go. That makes sense that uh, they would stop right just before 20 and lose. Um, yeah, I, I like – they have a great – Michigan has a great defense. Without Gray up right in the middle, I like Scarlett and, and P. Ryan to create, um, I don't know, mismatches and to really help Franks because he's going to need help. And uh, I don't think Franks is going to win us the game, but I think Myers is going to put him in a position to not lose us. And if things go south offensively, you're going to see a lot of Emory Jones, which I, which is going to be nice to, to mix it up with. Um and hopefully, maybe um, uh, force Franks to play with some more emotion and passion, which I think when he does, he plays real well with. So I, I like that. I like and, and Swain looks like he's healthy 100% again. So I think Florida does enough offensively. All right. Let's see. Is that the, that's the first one I picked different. Okay. Yeah. All right. Didn't have to ice kick or anything. No. <laughs> Oh, very good points. All right. Any last thoughts on your uh, your gears before we move on? No, no. I I uh, I've been down on. I've been kind of um, slow to get on the Mullen train, but now I'm on and I'm putting my, my chips in and I'm <laughs> trusting him on this one. All right. But like, if if he came in here to score points and run an offense, is what a great test. Then, like you said, the best defense, great test for him. Yep. Oh. Awesome. I have no doubt this will be actually a great game. Yeah, I think so, too. Well into the fourth quarter, too. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we have one more Florida team playing in a bowl game. That would be the UCF Knights traveling out to the desert to play LSU in the Fiesta Bowl. 
So this uh this is going to be quite the matchup and I like it for a lot of reasons. You know, can UCF continue his momentum having won 25 in a row? UCF schedule ended up being the 71st toughest in the nation. And as you can imagine LSU's was much harder. Actually, the hardest. They had the number 1 strength of schedule this season. Oh, really? The hardest schedule. And they go 10-2 and two with that schedule. One loss to A&M in seven overtimes. I'm not exaggerating. And yeah. <laughs> they lost to Florida on the road in the swamp. So here's some things here. LSU has a uh, rushing offense. They're about 58th, which is about middle of the road. But UCF's rush defense is 118. They're just – that's the biggest weakness of this team the entire season. They can't stop the run. Mm-hmm. And we saw what LSU did all the times they can get it going against Miami, against Georgia, etc. Right. Um, LSU's overall defense is about 30, which is, you know, upper third. UCS is 88, so uh, not great, but not terrible either. Uh, UCF has the offensive advantage for sure. They're going to run the ball a lot. Daryl Mack is going to get some speed to the outside. He's going to run Killens. He's going to run different screen passes to Snelson. He's got speed with Gabe Davis, and uh, they're utilizing a lot of different packages or later in the year to kind of use Killen's speed. He's even returned a couple of kicks, which you do want to be sparing with, but um, it's still a huge factor. Yeah. Here's a little wild card in this game. Uh, by the way, the – hope that I'm getting this award right. Mac Loudermilk, the punter for UCF, won the Maxwell Award, which is the holder of the year. Yes, it's a real award. I'm not making that That's- up. That's a thing? That's a thing. He actually won the award. Okay. So good for him. Yeah. He's His story, and I've, I've known about him for a couple of years now before even the winning streak started. He was actually a quarterback in high school. I can say with about 90% certainty, he's going to throw a pass from a fake uh, from a fake, fake punt formation. Watch for it. It may be early. It may be like midfield, like fourth and three-ish. Uh-huh. Uh, and I know Hypo is like holding this play for the rest of the season. He hasn't needed it. I thought maybe I might see that when they're playing the title game against Memphis. Yeah. Cause it was getting close, but their offense did the job. I can almost guarantee you're going to see it in this game. This okay. is max last game. He's a senior. He's done. This will be his last chance to get it. Uh, so just watch for that. Okay. Um, he's the guy you can't miss him. He looks like duck dynasty. He's got a huge okay. beard and <laughs> long hair, by the way, he's been growing it out for, uh, locks of love or one of those other hair donation right. places and after the game he said he's going to cut it all off okay so good for him interesting story here uh before i give tough my to... no go ahead i was gonna say tough to root against a guy like that i know i know i completely yeah. agree you know you want ucf to see this is a pretty good story coming out of orlando uh, before i give my pick i'm going to give you a couple of historical streaks here chris okay from 03 to 05 the usc trojans they won 34 games in a row. Do you remember what game they lost to end it? Was it the Texas? Yes, Texas. In the they, they championship lost, game. They lost their bowl game. Okay. Miami, from 2000 to 2002. They won 34 in a row. The game that they lost? Ohio State. Ohio State. Their bowl game. UCF, 2017 to 2018. They've won 25 in a row. What do all three of these teams have in common? They either have a real national championship with Miami. USC had a claimed national championship in 03 right. and then a real one in 04. UCF had a claimed one in 2017. I think LSU wins this game. LSU? LSU, 33 to 31. 33 31. Streak ends. Okay. Um, yeah, my, my thoughts on this. Uh, this is a different animal. LSU is a different animal than UCF is used to. Totally different. Just physical-wise, run game-wise, can play with you fourth quarter, four quarters. Like that, I mean, <laughs> LSU played, what, 13 quarters one game this year, so something like that. So um, it's a different animal. But I really like – I think uh, UCF has way more to play with. I Play for, I mean, I should say. Um, they want that two years in a row. They want that recognition. Hey, look at us. We deserve to be here. We should have been there. 
playoffs playing for Milton. Um, you see on LSU side, um, just sometimes there's sometimes they're kind of an enigma. You don't know who they are. Greedy Williams, their their corner, he's not playing. They're going to need him um, with UCF's offense. Um, and initially, I was thinking LSU, but I'm leaning towards UCF. I'm going UCF 37-34 in in overtime. Ooh, I love I'm that. calling an overtime game. <laughs> They're going to beat them. I think LSU is going to score first with a field goal. UCF is going to score a touchdown. 37-34. All right. Um, but I, it, it's, it's tough for me to say an SEC guy, um, you know, the quote-unquote big brother in, in Florida, <laughs> you know, one of them, you know. But I'm going UCF because um, – the, the handful of times that I counted UCF out last year and this year, they proved me wrong. So, um, you know, until then, until uh, till the, till they prove me right or whatever, <laughs> I'm going to pick them. I'm going to pick them. So. And you know what? I, I wanted to be clear on this. I, I do think UCF's the better team. Yeah. I yeah. really do. I think that LSU is more battle-tested. and Better team. That's a good one. I, I, I just – I think history stacks up against the Knights. I think that's right. really the biggest reason. And there's not a whole lot of numbers for me to support that except for the streaks I mentioned. Right, right. But a bowl game is usually where they end. Or, ironically, sometimes that started the streak is the team that ends it, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, oddly enough. That's why in 2012, before they lost to Florida, we go on to win 13 and 14. I'm like, oh, here we go. Florida's going to end it. Okay. But it didn't end up happening. We survived two more games before <laughs> okay, it ended yeah. miserably. So I think there is a lot here. You mentioned the physicality, the athleticism of LSU. That's what I really think uh, matters. And as I was I was hearing somebody over, overheard a conversation about this game, if you're UCF losing this game, you should not hang your heads about. And you know what? Our perception of them shouldn't change either. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a great team. If they were to fall here, I don't think any less of them. I think that UCF will be upset, as rightfully they should, thinking, hey, we sh- there's an SEC team we should have won. We had a little more to prove. We didn't get it done. Now we're going to fall back down. I don't think that's the case. Because if you were based on one athlete, like we mentioned before, then that would have already happened. I mean, look at the, the conference itself. No head coach stays more than three or four seasons. Mm-hmm. No program uh, other than UCF has had any kind of sustainability over the last 10 years. It just hasn't happened. Yeah. So you've proven to me you're the best of the group of five. Yeah, I think I think uh, it, they need they need to win this game to be relevant. And I'm not saying they're going to drop off, but um, especially we don't know what Milton's um, future holds, and mm-hmm. but we see that the the committee does not care that they have won. You know, I, I wouldn't say oh, that. Okay. I, I think I, that you know, I, I would say that the, the, uh, the fact that they didn't even get close to to four, um, two years in a row, says a lot. And if they lose one, then good luck. But uh, that's just my thoughts. I just don't think that the, they need to keep winning for for the chance to get to where they want to get. Keep winning, unless yes. They, unless but... they schedule, you know, a big time team or two outside their conference well they're trying to get that done um let's also keep in mind though this takes four or five years to happen so yeah you know they had scheduled north carolina when they had taken clemson down on the wire in the acc title game they were going to play them this year they were complete garbage they scheduled Pitt several years ago when Pitt beat clemson they were complete garbage so i mean there's no way to know where a program's going to go right yeah i don't i don't don't claim to have one but i just think um, just the way that the committee voted, especially this year, I'm like, man, the, they, uh, they do not care. The biggest thing they needed was to start higher. Now, this was the first time yeah. UCF ever started a season rank, so there's your respect. Um, they, if you lose this game, how high are they going to start next year? Well, that's that's the question. You know, yeah. where where will that initial ranking put them? And it's hard to know. Yeah, I mean, you got to assume they're a favorite to win 10, 11 games next year too. Yeah, yeah. But they got to go undefeated next year, not just. Well, I mean. Favor in 10 or 11 games. Uh, 
But yeah, favorite. I see. I see you're saying. They they have Stanford at home next season. (laughs) That's that'll help. Yeah, that'll help. Okay, I'm I'm just a little bit more pessimistic when it comes to the committee and (laughs) caring about UCF. Oh no no, let me yeah, I don't. (laughs) They certainly they certainly don't care about the group of five. That's that's been made obvious. And they. They, they have said, strength of schedule, go out and play somebody. Even if you lose, we're not going to penalize you that much if you're playing a tough schedule. But you, basically, UCF doesn't need to lock themselves into the American. They need to, they, as they've been doing for a long time, they need to be searching for something better, which they thought they had in the Big East, and then the D- Big East disbanded. So a lot of it's just un- unfortunate bad luck. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there, there you go. Yeah, and I'm not saying it's fair. I'm just saying, like, if they lose this game, they're going to drop off. I'm not saying it's fair. They should. I'm just saying, I just know how. <laughs> just looking for what, what happened this year, I, I, don't I don't know. So uh, everything you said and what we talked about, how does that fuel them in this game? I have no doubt they're going to come out ready to play. Yeah. And oh, yeah. it's going to be a great matchup because I, I really like – you sold me on the fourth quarter thing. You're absolutely right now that I think about it. LSU is going to play all the way through. And how will UCF do that? Because they haven't had a lot of games where it's gone that deep. Mm-hmm. Very, yeah. very curious. It'll be a fun one. It's going to be real fun to watch. I'm, yeah. My eyes are going to be glued onto that TV for sure. <laughs> I love it. I'm very excited. So let's see. We differed on two of them. The New Year's Six Bowls. You and I have different picks. So uh, the games do start. Uh, this will be released uh, Tuesday. December the 18th, and the first game was USF in the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. I'm just saying it now because I can. Um, they'll start, I think it's Thursday the 20th, and uh, these games will resume. So we'll know within a few days how the full yeah, teams yeah. will fare. Yeah. Excellent. Very exciting games. I think uh, generally they got all the bowl matchups right. You know, these were these were good teams. They were equal competition. These are bowl matchups you don't see very often. And um, very exciting. Uh, to the fans, Chris, they have a lot of opinions on what we've said about UCF, about the other bowl game there. They think we're totally off or we got it exactly right. How can they get in touch with us to give us some feedback? Well, if they think we're totally off, I can't argue with them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the best way, start off with the website, floridafocuspodcast.libsyn.com, Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. Um, Facebook and YouTube, Florida Focus Podcast. Hit us up on Twitter. Um, at Florida Focus Pod, or email us at Florida Focus Podcast at yahoo.com. I'd really like to see what your thoughts were on, um, or your thoughts were on um, the bowl season versus March Madness. Um, I want to hear hear the uh, arguments for both, and what is the best um, and most wonderful time of the year. Um, and then hit us up Snapchat and Instagram FL Focus Pod, and if you like to support us you can do it with our you can do that at our patreon account excellent and to the fans we thank you so much for listening to us it would really help us out if you would give us some feedback leave us a star rating preferably five stars on itunes that'd be great leave us some sentences maybe take 30 seconds to just tell us what you think while we're doing uh, how we're doing what we're doing well and what we can improve upon yeah. and um, subscribing and telling a friend saying hey these guys kind of know ish what they're talking about sort of and you know they have fun yeah. with it so <laughs> yeah if you don't have a new year's resolution here's your new year's resolution you find one week one once a week you find someone within your circle whether it's work family grocery store and you tell them about our podcast there you go one week once a week you find someone new tell them about our podcast I like that. That's your New Year's resolution. There you go. Don't have to worry about any the, – the gym membership, this one's free. <laughs> um, whatever. This is your resolution. Get the word out. So everybody listening, find one person every week. Tell them about us. Man, I'm inspired. I'm going to do that now, Chris. Really yes, am. do it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate the feedback. Uh, this is Brandon Sango Knowles. Go Gators. Go Gators.